my friends in Christ. In our second reading, Jesus, our Savior, is not unreachable. And while many of our friends and family may be suffering post-Hurricane Michael, and all of us here this morning may be bringing our own thoughts, worries, anxieties, our crosses to the Lord, Jesus shows us the way through our suffering. You know, it was interesting when I was reflecting our readings and preparing this homily, I was just thinking about last Sunday evening. I was invited to our Life Team program, and the subject was suffering and our relationship with Christ when it comes to suffering. And one of our teens got up and gave a tremendous witness about an experience that she had in her life, and it was the loss of her dear friend of hers, and how yet the reality of the loss, the pain, but also how she was to bring that in prayer, and especially in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. And that evening, I was just looking around, and there was over 150 teens there in Kinney Hall. If, if you've never been around on a Sunday evening at Christ the King, this place is happening. It is wild. Between the middle schoolers and their teens, you know, I was looking around and I was saying, all right, these teens don't have to be here. It's not one of these confirmation requirements. But I'm thinking, they're here. They could be anywhere else. I'm sure some of them were thinking about the homework they had to do. But they were here. And just watching their reverence, especially during adoration, and the respect that they had, and how they entered into prayers. And as I was preparing my homily, I was thinking, you know, that's what the Highland Center is all about. It's about the future of our church and providing for that future. It's about preparing servants. Jesus reminds us so powerfully in the gospel today, here two of the disciples got off track, James and John, and they asked the Lord, we want to ask something of you. And they asked for a place at the right and at the left. And Jesus reminded them, that is not for me to give. And then the other disciples kind of lost track and they became indignant with the other two. And yet Jesus brings them back to the reality of who we are and what we're about. He reminds us that we're called not to serve, but to serve. Not to be served, but to serve. And what we're about from the beginning, the foundation of the church and the foundation of Christ the King Parish, that's what we're about. Not about being served, but called to serve. And through the Highland Center, we are able to offer more and extend that discipleship, training the next generation to serve, to serve God's people. And I think sometimes we too lose sight of that. So this morning I want to talk a little bit about the Highland Center and where we are. At least you see the hole has concrete in it, which is a good thing. And in the next few weeks you'll see uh, real construction happening. But on Friday I received a call from the Letty Pate Evans Foundation. And a few months ago they put a challenge grant to us for half a million dollars. Now, in order to receive that grant, we need to be at our goal of $30 million by December 1st. Now, that's just a little bit over a month ahead of us. Now, I know your generosity, I know your support, but I think it would be sinful of us and bad stewardship if we left that half million dollars on the table and didn't make an effort to get to our goal. So, where are we? Well, between gifts and pledges, we're at $29 million. And when you reflect on that, to share with you, that's from 28% of our parish families. So that's just about less than 1,600 families, but we've 6,500 families. And so, in one sense, that's wonderful. In another sense, it's really a little bit sinful. 
that we're not all doing our part in regard to the Highland Centre. And so today, my dear friends, I come as your pastor once again, and hopefully it's the last time I'll come to talk about the Highland Centre. But I'm going to ask you seriously about your gift to the Highland Centre. If you have not made a pledge, and it's over a three-year period, I'd ask you seriously to sit with your family this evening and talk about that gift. You know, people will say to me, and they make all sorts of excuses, well, our kids are done, you know, with PSR and with school and things like that. We'll never use the Highland Centre. Let me tell you, you will. Because the way we will reconfigurate the whole order and the plan around the cathedral for use of space, you will use it. And you will bear the fruits of the Highland Centre in years to come. Now, could you imagine if we had 50% participation? What that would mean? Now, I know there's many that have already fulfilled their pledges, and I thank them for that. And maybe I'd ask you if we would reconsider another gift towards the calf builder campaign for the Highland Center. Or maybe within your life at this time, you could increase your pledge. Last night, one of our parishioners came to me, and they increased their pledge by 100,000. Now, we all can't do that, and I know that. But seriously, if you were really to sit down and think about it, could I? Could I make that a little bit more of a sacrifice and see the campaign go ahead? Now, you can be all praying about winning the lottery next week. I want to tell you it's not going to happen. And don't tell me, Monsignor, if I win, we're all okay. It's not going to happen. So, now it may, and if it does, I will be very happy. But we have to be realistic. And so, my dear friends, I'm asking that to really consider, all of us to consider, if we haven't given a pledge, to give a pledge. If we can increase our pledge, that would be fantastic. If you can give me a million dollars, that would be fantastic as well. And if you're coming from Holy Spirit, I just want to tell you, you can pledge as well. And Monsignor Dillon has no problem because he's starting a campaign in the next few months himself. So you're not going to get away whichever way you go. But my dear friends, you know, it's an exciting time. You know, but all that's happening within our world, even what's happening within our church, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time to watch the kids watching this happening. You know, in the morning we have our little uh, TV show and the contractors go up once a week and they ask question, answer questions that the kids put forward about the new Highland Centre. It's exciting to watch, see how the kids have made, how school still goes on and there's this big building project going on. You know, I was thinking the other day we had to change our carpool plan because uh, of the pour, the concrete, and I'm thinking, I'm waking up in the morning, and thinking, you know, when I wanted to become a priest, I wanted to celebrate mass, wear vestments, and do all kinds of things. I never thought I'd be worried about carpool and how carpool was going to work. It was the neighborhood going to be upset, where we're going to block their driveway. So it's exciting. You know, the vision of the Highland Center is over. The reality is, it's been built and it's going to be finished in a year. And in your pews today, you will have a good sense of what's it going to look like. And outside, you'll see a display of all the finishings of the Highland Center. And so we have worked hard in planning, making it uh, a reality, and putting it all together. This is a tremendous investment for everybody. And it is, is, it is exciting. It's been 20 years in the happenings, and now it's happening. It's no longer a vision, it is a reality. So, as your pastor, I ask you to prayerfully consider, let's look to the future of Christ the King Cathedral with excitement, enthusiasm, but just remembering the mission of Christ, that we are called not to be served, but to serve. And we're called to prepare the future of our church to be real servant leaders. 
May the Lord give success to the work of our hands. Amen.